Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being your show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Batwoman. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we have Alice handing Carthright over to Kate. And I was actually kind of surprised to see what Kate ultimately ended up doing. She ended up bringing her dad into her, I guess because she needed someone, I mean, I guess she had to turn to someone that she can trust that would kind of help her, you know, do the right thing in the situation. But then it's like, wait, this is car fight. How did you get him? It's like, well, all right, let me explain some things. Beth did it because Beth's actually a lot. Well, Alice is alive. And he's like, what? No, I saw it. It's like, yeah. The, and she basically has to explain, yeah, like with all the skin freaks around that we've seen lately here in Gotham, is it really that strange? And it's so sad because, you know, it has to be hard to say that, talk about Beth like that, considering the fact that that's the Beth you wanted to choose. But the fact of the matter is you can't tell your dad about any of this because he's not going to believe you. I mean, Beth's already dead, so there's no, like, used to bringing him into the fold about it because he's not going to believe you because he already, you know, already has one crazy daughter, Alice. He's just going to think you're nuts too uh if you could explain everything that went down in crisis no one's gonna believe you you know so it's like ain't no reason to um kind of bring that up to your dad in that regard you know so but um now it turns into a situation of like what are they gonna do because initially kate wants to like hand him over to the gcpd but that's a problem too because like they can't arrest him because if they did arrest him the only viable witness to all this would be Allison, she's crazy and she's a killer, so she's not a viable enough witness to kind of be used against them, and there's nothing technically being held against them. But it's also, you know, it pisses uh, Jacob off the fact that he's like, wait, this dude has been under our nose the entire time. He's been pretending to be, you know, that surgeon. Uh, apparently, I didn't realize he was so beloved in, um, you know, in uh, Gotham and stuff like that. The, the surgeon he was pretending to be and everything. So, all of that. But then, like, he also talks about what's going on with Alice. Alice ended up rescuing Mouse. And, you know, and I was like, I was like, oh, wow, this kind of went, didn't go as, I was like, oh, he seems pretty, it's like he's a little pissed because, well, to be fair, he thinks Beth is dead because that's what he was told. Well, Alice is dead. Uh, but it, Alice is like, no, I'm alive and everything. But sadly, because of the fear toxins and everything, he ends up knocking, um, Alice out and hooking her up to it instead, kind of boasting her greatest fear, which we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I do like the fact is apparently it seems like Carthright, it's like, oh, my my good friend, Dr. Crane. So I'm like, oh, okay, so you're buddies with Scarecrow. Makes you wonder which Scarecrow he was buddies with. Was it actually Scarecrow's father? I mean, I don't know, because that Scarecrow's situation, that's probably like, because I think I'm thinking of Gotham where it's like uh, Dr. Crane's son became um scarecrow but i mean it's probably like straight up just dr crane was it's always interesting with like i guess it's just interesting when like villains end up knowing each other in certain regards i mean i guess that explains how he got access to the fear talks and stuff like makes you wonder where scarecrow is i wonder is he in um arkham asylum or not probably not we haven't seen arkham at all this season right the, the only time we've seen arkham was in the elseworlds crossover right to my recollection I don't, I, I, they referenced it. I don't think we've ever seen anyone locked up in there, though. Because it's just, like, general, like, police um, jails that, like, uh, Jacob was in and stuff like that. To my recollection, I could be wrong. But, um, nevertheless, it's actually kind of sad because we kind of fold this into, you know, uh, it turns out, like, um, Alice's greatest fear is uh, Carthright's mother, who she calls the Queen of Hearts, which is interesting because that shows you she, you know, that was already, already a kind of a thing of like, oh, you're afraid of Carthright. The fact is you're afraid of his mother shows just how much worse she is than him, you know, because it's not even like, well, I mean, her fear has a combination of many things, but you would have thought like, you know, it would have been, it, it shows you like the layers upon like the, the, um, the order of like, greatest fears to like lower fears like the whole thing was like obviously her greatest fear was like the queen of hearts but obviously it was like also her dad and kate uh giving up on her you know and being like oh she's not worth it anymore so that's why i'm saying like tier wise it seems like uh carthright's mother kind of goes at the top but um it's it's sad when we actually see it like the i, I thought it was interesting because we'll get to it in a second but the moment uh she points out the necklace and stuff like that it's like oh where'd you get that and then she's like oh i don't remember i was like i thought she was messing around but i guess it's like the kind of she got rid of her persona as beth and just took upon the persona of alice at that point in time so to kind of you know she basically compartmentalized herself so i 
I didn't realize that by becoming Alice, she kind of wiped her memories, just, just everything that was Beth related, just because it would have been too painful holding on to all that because she needed to be Alice to find a way to get through all that trauma. You know, that's why she concocted this whole like fairy tale of making everything into an Alice in Wonderland way. It was her, her brain as a child or a way to kind of compensate with the a way to compensate and deal with the trauma she was going through it, it, it was meant to be her escape you know so but i didn't realize it was to that level that she'd bury i thought she was just saying that just because it was like oh i'm not supposed to say where i got it from but it, nevertheless but um that, mother, that woman was atrocious because I guess it makes sense because even then it's like, oh, this is the girl, right? Not at any point you go, she go, oh, I got it. Oh, who's this girl? Like, oh, this is your daughter or something like that? It's like, no, she went, oh, this must be the girl. So meaning Carthright said like, oh, this is the girl I found and took as my own and stuff like that. Uh, hence why she ended up treating her so bad. I mean, it probably wouldn't have mattered either way because I, I wondered – like, because we don't know what her re her interactions were with Johnny. It's just kind of like, oh, you fixed the scars on his face. Good. That's the only interaction we saw, like, when Johnny hugged her and stuff like that. She didn't hug him back and stuff like that. But we don't really know. But now you can see, like, what her whole thing is. Like, she was resentful to Alice because Alice was like, oh, your skin's so pure. Like, part of me was almost wondering. This wasn't a route they are going on. But just because Teen Titans is in my head, I'm like, is she? at first I was like, is that supposed to be, like, Mother May I? Um, that's what I was wondering if that's the direction they were going with that. It turns out not to be the case, but I, get, I mean, it's very befitting in the grand scheme of things, especially when you look at the Alice in Wonderland comparison, like Beth being Alice, her being, and the grandmother being the queen of hearts, not like just being pissed and just being unreasonable when it comes to Alice. Once again, this is based on just the Disney cartoon plus Kingdom Hearts is my point of reference when it comes to Alice in Wonderland. So that's what I'm kind of pulling from when I think of the queen of hearts. Um, but the fact of the matter is slaps her because the tea was too sweet. Oh, the tea's so hot pours it on her hands and burns her hands and it's just and then it was interesting because like every once in a while you kind of flip to like seeing her just as herself but then at one point you see her like kind of like her skin like ripped off her like off her face and stuff like that. i'm like what's that about is that like supposed to be how you see her does it have something to do with like how she died or something you know so while Alice is kind of dealing with that, they're trying to make a decision. Well, because Carthage is, oh, I'll tell you where Alice is. Because the fact of the matter is, Alice being pumped full of that gas is kind of the worst thing because she's already unstable. You add, you get rid of any sanity she has left with this um, fear toxin. And the fact of the matter is, who knows what kind of way that will break her. Either, hey, maybe she'll jump off a building or maybe she'll go, Or because at least as insane as she is now, she's calculated there's no like, oh, I'm. She's not going full blown, uh, super villain like Joker levels of. Mm, I'm gonna gas the city, um, or gassing the Daily Planet if we go by like you know, um, Superman's that uh, um other Superman, Brandon Ralph Superman in Crisis, for example. So it's not something to that level. It's usually on a much much smaller scale. But it's like who's to say what she would end up doing with the you know fear toxins running through her veins? So they had to try to get to her. And obviously he kept being like, oh, who's to say that you're not going to kill me the moment you get a chance? But Kate's like, I'm nothing like Alice. The fact of the matter is, I'm who my sister would have been if you hadn't stripped away everything that was good in her art, her hopes and her courage and everything. If you had taken all that away from her, she did, I'm who she would be. So she's like, I'm not a killer, so I'm not going to cross that line. So the fact is, you know, eventually offering him, well, at first he tried to kill himself uh, to make it so that like, oh, but... Kate ends up, well, Batwoman calls up Mary and gets help, which even looks like, oh, what was that about? She's like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Uh, you know, confidential doctor vigilante confidentiality, you know? So, uh, and I love what's up here. Mary's like, yeah, call me anytime. I'm always here to help. It's just like, she's super, she wants to be a sidekick so bad, dude. It's crazy. Um, but nevertheless, like, luckily she was able to save him, but it's like, I won't kill you. Just tell me where my sister is. And, you know, Luckily, they were able, you know, uh, Jacob was able to get there in time. And the thing is, it, it, it's actually kind of sweet. Yeah, it's kind of like crazy when you actually think about it. Like him saving her just because I, he made such a point of like, oh, Al, when he got arrested, it's like, oh, Alice is going to die for what she did to Catherine and framing me and everything. Like he was dead set on like, you know, there was even part of him that was like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of not sad that she's not dead. But now knowing that like she's alive and I have a chance 
Like, I think, because there's a part of him, because he's like, I care. Like, despite how you might think, I don't care. I do care. You're still my daughter regardless of it. So there's always going to be a part of him that loves it. But it's so interesting, considering the fact is when he saw, quote, unquote, Beth, he was kind of, like, numb to it. But the fact is, he's concerned about Alice. Because, like I said, one thing is, like, seeing her dead, you know, it's nothing you can do about it. But this Alice is like, I can do something. I can save her, you know, while she still has some sanity left. Because I think maybe there is some part of him, much like Kate, that's like, hey, if she's still at least somewhat sane, that means... Maybe there is still some part of Beth underneath all of that crazy that is Alice, you know? And so, and what's interesting too, because we see that it isn't just like a minor like, oh, like the grandmother stayed for a little while. We see Alice get older, you know, with her too and still kind of uh, um, getting all that abuse and everything. And obviously it wasn't just the mo um Cartwright's mother slapping her around obviously he did too because it's like you know it's like because she was bad mouthing his mother and everything and he slapped her and he tried to make it so yeah all that abuse and stuff like that she suffered abuse from you too he wants to make it because I think even I remember correctly uh 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 geez um Kate had even been like oh yeah because yeah I guess she, yeah oh she Alice only ended away because your mother was a monster right 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 you know but um it was actually kind of sad when it, well, I, I, I might as well talk about it because I didn't talk about it, but the fact of the matter is all at the same time, like while all this is going down, uh, Mary and Luke are working together to track down the person who shot um, Beth, not realizing it's the same person, not, well, because obviously Kate hasn't called in to tell, you know, Luke what she was up to, so they were kind of in the dark about literally everything that was going down in their side of the episode, but um, luckily they were able to track it down, found the gun and everything inside. Well, they found the car at the junkyard, and but then they were able to kind of uh, piece it back to get like trail it back to like oh it belonged to Cartwright's mother. Interestingly enough, I love the entire time uh, Mary's in there. She's like moving books because she's hoping to move the bookshelf because she's like I know I, I know the pastor's well, must be in here or something because you guys spend so much time here. And he's like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm to, and I'm like, oh you're so close because obviously it's like obviously we we know as the audience knows like the trigger to like the elevator to back cave is over there. It's literally the pearl necklaces and the, but I'm sure she wouldn't touch that just because of what it is. She. I mean, she's probably watched enough fiction to be like, oh, obviously it's got to be like, you know, a bookcase, like you move a book and stuff like that, you know, so I don't think she would jump to like, well, because that would also mean touching like kind of a family, not necessarily heirloom, but something that's important to the family, like those pearls. I'm sure she just would. I don't think anyone would jump to the conclusion to touch those just because it's like, oh, how sacred that is and everything. But regardless, but um, it turns out it wasn't just. Uh, the abuse that she suffered from um, Carthwright's mother, what it turns out is it's like the moment, like, and this happens with Kate, when Kate ends up piecing it together because Luke and um, Mary called about the whole, like, oh, Carthwright being the one that killed um, Beth. And obviously that's sucky because, once again, this is the Beth that you wanted to save. And then it's like, because for him already, it's, it's it, well... Well, we'll kind of break it down because the fact is, you know, because it's like, oh, yeah, like if she hadn't found those necklaces tied to that ear, those earrings and like what earrings and that moment Beth said, like he mentioned earrings. I'm like, oh, your mom, because then I remember because Alice said, what did she do when she found their mother? Their mother lost her head. And I'm like. I was like, so part of me was wondering, did she lose her head because of the accident? At the time, I assumed it was that. But now in retrospect, it's like was Alice referencing the fact is that Carthwright cut off her head. Basically, the mother, his mother wanted to be young and everything. So do, basically doing what he was doing for Johnny, kind of covering up his scars, he wanted to do the same thing. So he was going to use, he was going to use their mother's skin to put on um, his mother to make her feel young again. But the fact of the matter is it was always just kind of like a backup plan. He knew that eventually she would kind of die and not have to worry about that and stuff. But it's like, that sent Beth, oh, I mean, uh, that sent um, Kate over the edge. Because this is the dude that not only killed her sister twice, because he killed the original Beth by making her into Alice, um, by abusing and torturing her. And then he also literally killed Beth from Earth-99. And now you also found out, oh, he chopped off your mom's head. It's like, and what he had planned for it too, like enough, that's enough to piss you off. And just in that moment, she starts strangling him. 
And in that moment, she ends up killing him. And by the time Jacob and Alice get there, it's like, shit, like, Kate, what did you do? And Alice is kind of enjoying this because it's like, oh, yeah, it's basically a dream come true because she thought about it. She dreamt about it because now it's like, oh, for one, I think for her, it's probably even more delicious that it's her sister that killed him and not her. Because I think there's also a part of her that's like, ah, like, you care about me. The fact of the matter is you still care. But I guess it also separates and makes it go like, oh, like, you're not that high and mighty, Kate, because you've crossed that line. So we're not that different type of thing. And even telling Jacob, being like, now both of your now both of your daughters are murderers, and she's trying to and she's trying to drink the problem this whole situation away, and she's even you know trying to text um, Sophie, but she doesn't obviously. And at the same time, it's like, oh man, this must be so hard for Kate, but don't worry, she'll track him down and get you know bring him to justice. Is kind of what Mary's saying, but now it's like okay. And then at the same time, there's a whole situation with I didn't even talk about it, but um, there uh, his mother died because um. We finally find out why her skin looked like that in um, Alice's head. It's because she burned her alive. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you know, Alice is like, well, you know, quite a day that we've both been having. The fact of the matter is, bodies don't bury themselves. So now it's going to be a situation. I'm now all three of them going to work together to kind of cover up this crime and end up burying this body. Now, Kate, because for Kate, she was so sure, like, oh, I'd never crossed that line. And now she has. And the question then becomes, What's going to happen to her going forward? Like, this is going to be weighing on her conscience, especially because Luke and Mary are going to be like, yo, you got to find this car fight guy. And then they might try to get the GCPD involved and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe not, because it is he did kill Alice. So it's probably not going to be looked at as much of a crime. But then it's like her carrying this. Is she going to tell Luke? Is she going to tell Mary? The only people she can confide into is the other people complicit in this situation. And that's Jacob and Alice. And, you know, Alice is probably going to look at this as an opportunity. Like, ah, we're kind of the same sis. And now it's like, oh, you're going to give up this whole superhero thing. And we can kind of be a family again. I don't know. Is she going to be, she's probably not still going to be as forgiving to Jacob. But it still makes you wonder, like, What's going to end up happening on that front? The, another element to be considered as well is Mouse is still out there high as hell on that fear toxin. Who knows what that's going to do? But his dad's dead now. I mean, is he dead? Because let's not forget, um, she was, uh, Alice was so sure that he was dead before. I think even, you know, Mouse was sure that he was dead, but it turned out he was alive. So who's to say he can't fake his death? He probably like stopped breathing. Like he probably was able to kind of slow his heartbeat down and make it seem like he's dead. I'm assuming he's straight up dead, but I'm, I'm curious to see what they end up doing with that. Like, I'm, I'm curious to see what that, like I said, what this means for Kate going forward of like, you cross that line, a line that shouldn't be crossed. And it's a very steep hill that, like, you know, even heroes within the Arrowverse in particular, Oliver Queen struggled with that so much. You know, it's not the easiest thing bouncing back from that. You know, it's like, because you thought that you would never do that and to see that you're, you know, and I'm wondering, is that going to make her, you know, question herself as Batwoman? It's like, do I even have a right to put the cowl on? Uh, because even early in the episode when she was saving that woman, she pointed a gun towards the dude's head, but knocked him out. And, you know, you see it all kind of come full circle like that, even with the whole earring situation. I am curious whatever happened to her mother's head. Like, I'm, I'm wondering, did she like bury it or something? Leave it like, what does she do with that? Uh, that's another question. I'm curious, you know, a lot of, a lot of things to keep in mind going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.